Hi, welcome everyone. Today I will be discussing the second part of the lecture series Understanding COVID-19. Today we will be discussing about the drug HCQ. Just a reminder of the graph which we discussed in the last part. There are total four stages in COVID-19. The incubation period, the symptomatic and the pulmonary phase which is divided into early as well as late. As we know, the viral replication is more in the symptomatic period from around day 5 to day 12 and in the later pulmonary phase, the replication is minimal or almost absent. Simultaneously, we will be activating our immune system in symptomatic phase but if we are not able to control the disease, our immune system will be deregulated in the later pulmonary phase and this will lead to cytokine storm, macrophage activation syndrome and eventually death. This is the severity of the disease. One approach of treating the disease is to treat in the early phase itself. That is to put out the fire when it is small. Thereby, we can prevent the disease progression to more complicated stages. Right now, what we are trying to do is to use the best available tool against the virus. Once we develop better tool, we will transit to it. Meanwhile, we will have to rely on the best available tool which is available to us right now. Coming to HCQ, most of the data we are discussing here as an antiviral property are anecdotal type. My views about the duct drug will be changing once we get more evidence. This lecture is just for discussion, it is not for prescription. So treat early means we have to try to treat the disease in the symptomatic or an in incubation phase but not in the later phase. India is one of the few countries which still prescribes HCQ for the treatment as well as prophylaxis against COVID-19. In the latest version 5, released on 3rd July 2020, they recommended HCQ in the following scenarios. Scenario number 1. In case of mild COVID-19 disease, HCQ may be, yes, HCQ may be considered in those having high risk factors, mild wins, patients with uncomplicated upper respiratory tract infection without evidence of hypoxia or breathlessness. The second scenario where they are suggest to give HCQ is in the moderate cases. The dose is 400 mg BD in the day one followed by 200 mg BD for four days. So here we can see in case of mild disease, HCQ may be considered and in case of moderate disease, they are suggesting to start HCQ and in severe disease, there is no role of HCQ as per the guidelines. In ICMR updates, HCQ as a prophylaxis is also suggested. It is recommended for all asymptomatic healthcare workers who are treating COVID-19 patients asymptomatic frontline workers, asymptomatic household contacts of laboratory confirmed cases. And these are the exclusion criteria, retinopathy, sensitivity to HCQ, G6 period deficiency, and pre-existing cardiomyopathy or cardiac rhythm disorders. And the dose which ICMR mentioned is shown here, 400 mg twice a day on day one, followed by 400 mg once a week, for next three weeks. In healthcare workers, it's up to seven weeks. And an ECG may be done before giving the HCQ prophylaxis and should given under strict medical supervision with an informed consent and should be only prescribed by a registered medical practitioner. Coming to the SCQ scenario in COVID-19, Dr. Selenko is one of the practitioner who strongly proposed the use of HCQ along with the combination of zinc and acetromycin to treat COVID-19. 
so we'll see something about execute it is basically a basic drug that is it is a drug with high ph it increases the ph in the intracellular acidic environment which might directly interfere with the viral replication here we can see the cycle of covid-19 it attaches to the ace2 receptors it enters the cell after fusion it releases its genomic rna to the cytoplasm with the help of rna dependent rna polymerase replication and translation happens it produces the pro some parts of the virus like spike protein membrane protein nucleocapsid envelope protein and this will go to a rough endoplasmic reticulum where budding and assembly happens and with the help of the golgi apparatus it is released into the vesicles which is released outside the cell this is a normal cycle of covid-19 virus inside the cell so we will see what happens once we give hc hcq the main antiviral property of hcq is supposed to be the sing ionophore it opens the sing channel and sing from outside the cell enters the cell and the sing will actually inhibit the rna dependent rna polymerase thereby it will prevent the replication and translation of the viral properties this is considered to be the major or this is proposed as the major mechanism of action against sars cov 2 other actions is like it prevents the budding and assembly in the endoplasmic reticulum by increasing the ph in intracellular same way it will prevent the attachment and entry of the sars cov 2 virus into the cell by increasing the ph of the intracellular and this also having some immunomodulation action which is not having much importance in this scenario according to selengo if hcq is the gun sing is considered to be the bullet so he always proposed to give sing as well as hcq together one interesting thing is about the pharmacokinetics of hcq it is extremely unusual pharmacokinetics it is well absorbed it is taken up by the rbc rapidly and released to the serum it is important to note that it takes about 10 days to achieve adequate plasma and lung concentration considering this unique pharmacokinetics of hcq it is unlikely that hcq is of benefit unless used very early or as a prophylaxis and only around 2% of the drug reaches the lung and also it is having a long terminal elimination half life of around 32 days in the plasma and around 50 days in the blood coming back to our original slide if you are giving hcq in the late phase or in the severe phase it is not going to help you because here there is no viral replication but if you are giving in the symptomatic phase suppose you are giving in the day 7 after the incubation or after 2 to 3 days of uh, symptoms what will happen it will take at least 7 to 10 days to reach the lung or the serum level so the benefit of drug in this phase is also doubtful but if you are giving hcq in the very early stage say in the incubation period or maybe day 1 or 2 on the onset after the onset of the symptoms and probably it is going to be beneficial Coming to the original study of Selengo, this is a retrospective case series study. It is important to note that the study was conducted in the GP. It was conducted in the outpatient. So he classified patients into three groups or the HCQ was given in group A who is having age more than 60 years with or without clinical symptoms. Group B, there is patient less than 60 years but with symptoms of shortness of breath. Group C, in age less than 60 years who are clinically symptomatic but having one of the following comorbid like hypertension, diabetes, obese, etc. And those who had contraindication like QT prolongation, retinopathy, G6PD deficiency was excluded. The dose he given was HCQ 200 mg BD, 50 mg of zinc and azithromycin 500 mg OD. What he found was interesting the odds of hospitalization of treated patient were 84% less when compared to untreated group. One patient in the treatment group died 
whereas 13 patients in the untreated group died. So he concluded that SCQ was associated with significantly less hospitalization and five times less all cause deaths. Now we'll discuss about the critique and other studies where HCQ was used. This was a study published in April 24, 2020, which was published in JAMA. This study was conducted in Brazil, where they used chloroquine in patients with severe acute respiratory syndrome due to SARS-CoV-2. So here we can see the design of the study itself was to select hospitalized patients who were having severe acute respiratory syndrome due to SARS-CoV-2. So the treated patients who were actually very sick or might be in the later phase. And the dosage they used was totally different. They used chloroquine instead of HCQ and the chloroquine dose was 600 mg twice daily in one group and 400, 450 mg twice daily in another group. And they have to stop the study in the high dosage group because of arrhythmia. It is not surprising that the chloroquine dose used in this study was very high. And it is known that chloroquine is around five times more potent than HCQ. Point number two, chloroquine is also more harmful than HCQ. And point number three, it was used in the later phase of the disease, which we discussed earlier, where HCQ or a chloroquine might not be beneficial. And it was not used in combination, which might have been more beneficial effect. This is another study published in BMJ recently, where they assessed the clinical efficacy of hydroxychloroquine in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia who require oxygen. Once again, the participants here were severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2 pneumonia, who required oxygen but not in ICU. So here again, they have selected patients who were sick, probably patients in the late or early pulmonary phase. And the dose given here was 600 mg per day. So once again, in this study, it was started late. The dose was given once per day, which we are not sure. And it was not given in combination with zinc, which might have been beneficial. This is the recent article which is published on August 6, few days back, where they did a randomized trial of hydroxychloroquine as post-exposure prophylaxis for COVID-19. This was published in NAGM. Here they randomly assigned participants to receive HCQ 800 mg once followed by 600 mg 8 hours later, then 600 mg daily for 4 additional days. The conclusion was that after high risk or moderate risk exposure to COVID-19, HCQ didn't prevent the illness. So this was mainly a negative study. This was a well conducted, well designed study. And they did use zinc with this study. Probably if we have, they have used zinc, it would have been beneficial. And nowadays, there are a lot of articles which are suggesting to start seeing along with LCQ in case of SARS-CoV-2 virus, especially in the very early phase. So to conclude, if you are using HCQ in the early phase, maybe within two days of symptoms, or maybe as a prophylaxis, it is going to help you. If you're using in the later phase, it is not going to help you. But if you're using in between, because of the peculiar pharmacokinetics of HCQ, it takes at least 7 to 10 days to achieve the lung or the serum level. So the benefit of HCQ during this phase is in doubt. Thank you.